Hello everybody and welcome to episode 31 of my Road to Warcraft Let's Play. The first thing that I'm wanting to do at the start of this episode is come over to my mailbox because I want to see if any of the auctions that we put up on the last episode have sold and you can see they were all successful. So we got 20 silver there, 20 silver here, and then we got 10 gold here. So my wish very much came true. And then we have this one gold here. So we are now at 31 gold in our inventory here, which is very nice. The number that we're kind of looking at right now is 100 gold because that is gonna be what we need in order to get our mount once we reach level 40. Today, I am hoping to go across the Thandos Band, north out of the weapons and into the lands of Lordaeron. But first, I want to work on a quest chain that's going to take us a little bit north, not all the way north, but I want to get up towards that point. And it starts here in the Cathedral District, and you can go ahead and go into the Cathedral and we can pick up this quest chain. This is a very important quest chain and I'm going to spend two episodes working on it. This episode here right now and then a few episodes from now we'll go ahead and pick it back up. Because we need to be like around level 35-ish I think for like the end parts of this quest chain. But for the starting parts we're at a pretty good level right now. Let's go ahead and talk to Thomas to pick up the first quest of this quest chain called the Missing Diplomat. Excuse me sir, Bishop DeLavey asked me to approach adventurers that might be able to help him with the delicate matter. If you could quietly head to Stormwind Keep and speak to him at your earliest convenience, I'm sure he would appreciate your help. Again, please be discreet. It is a matter of some importance. So, let's go ahead and find Bishop DeLavey and Stormwind Keep. Back here in Stormwind Keep, let's go ahead and come into this chamber here. You can find the bishop just wandering around here. It looks like he's the only person in here. Let's go ahead and chat with him. And he says, hello. No doubt if you're asking me about my business here in the keep, then young Thomas has succeeded in requisitioning you to help our kingdom. He has always been adept at following my requests. I'm afraid I don't have time to elaborate much, so allow me to be blunt, and please try to keep this from becoming common knowledge. Recently, a diplomat was sent to Theramore to meet with Jaina Proudmore. That diplomat never arrived. I believe the Defias are involved in this plot, but I'm not sure how. The diplomat's disappearance still leaves public attention, but it can't remain that way for long. Agents of the Keen are already scouring the city for clues, but I have my own contacts I would like involved. In the Valley of Heroes is an old friend of mine named Jorgen. Find him, give him this note, and follow his instructions. So we have a missing diplomat that was sent to speak with Jaina Pradmore and Theramore Isle and has disappeared. And the Kingsmen want us to help find this diplomat. So let's go ahead and head to the Valley of Heroes so we can chat with Jorgen and try to figure this all out. This letter here says, Jorgen, my fears have come true and they have acted in ways I never thought capable. Never did I think they would get this close, but they have. Please help the bearer of this note and send them to him. In all honesty, I think he will aid us because of the seriousness of this matter. If it were any other threat, he would probably continue to ignore us and the problems of our fair city. Thank you, you old fisherman. I am indebted to you as always, your friend, DeLavey. So Jorgen, some sort of friend to DeLavey, some sort of individual who seems to be connected with him, as well as another individual that DeLavey is referring to as him. So let's go ahead and chat with Jorgen and figure this out. So down here next to the lake in the Valley of Heroes, we have Jorgen here who is fishing. Let's go ahead and chat with him. And he says, hmm, you better have good reason to interrupt a man in his fishing. I don't take kindly to peddlers, let alone beggars. Hmm. All right, I'll help you, but not because I want to, but because I'm obligated. And let's get one thing straight. You're knowing far more than you should to begin with. Let's keep this our little secret and don't go blabbing at any taverns about anything you find out. Understand? Take this here note to Elingtrius. Don't say nothing else to him. Just be polite and wait for him to respond. And don't worry, he will. I'm going to only impress Lysania once more, Athos. Treat this matter seriously and keep your yapper shut. You can find Trius at his cheese shop, Trius's cheese in the trade district. Good luck. So Elling Trius is someone that we have worked with before in helping figure out more about the Defias. So let's go ahead and return to him about this situation that is going on with potentially the Defias Brotherhood and a very important situation that no one wants us to be talking publicly about. We don't want to talk to anyone at the tavern. We don't want to talk to anyone on the street. We want to keep this to ourselves. So this is a very, very important situation. And whoever this diplomat is must be an incredibly important individual for everyone to be so worried about. But let's go ahead and come over here into the trade district. And then we can talk to our old pal, Elling Trius. 
pal in quotations. He's more like a work acquaintance that we've seen once or twice before. But it's very interesting that this individual, Elin Trias, is so involved with like the politics and the safety and security of Stormwind because he's just a master of cheese. And he says, hello, Athos, is there something I can do for you? Perhaps you'd like to try some of our special Trias cheddar or a block of Darnassian blue? And he says, I'm sorry, a letter for me? Well, I'll be not often you get a delivery that's not a crate or barrel when all you do is work. Let's see what this is about. You look a little tense. You okay, Athos? And he says, Jorgen, you old son of a... So that's how it's going to be, huh? All right, I can deal with that. I will be fine with the twisting nether that much sooner. Here's what's going to happen, Athos. I'll start using my contacts here, but you're doing most of the footwork, so I saved some coin. Head to Darkshire and Duskwood and find Watcher Bacchus. He usually patrols the North Road right outside of town. Just tell him you're looking into any defiance activity for me, and he'll help you out with any information he can. So let's once again go ahead and Hearthstone back to Darkshire, and then we can find Watcher Bacchus. So heading north out of the road from Darkshire, we can go ahead and talk to the Watcher here, and... He says, oh, Trius sent you, huh? That's a little different. Feel free to fight whatever monstrosities come at you from the darkness. I'm sure you'll be able to handle it pretty easily if you're the type to be hanging around with the likes of him. So what does my friend need of me on such a gloomy day as this? Defias activity. Well, there's always some activity. Even if they keep to themselves, we consider them a threat. But now that I think about it, there was a recent sighting that seemed odd. It must have been a couple weeks ago, but some of the agents had gathered around Adol's stead. From the report, I guess something big went down. Why don't you check there first and bring me back anything you find? The farmstead is just south of the road from Westfall just as you enter Duskwood. So we'll go ahead and accept that quest. And we can see here, Adelstead is this farmstead that we saw, I think, two episodes ago. We wandered through there just to take a look at it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and actually take a griffin to Sentinel Hill and then run over there because that might be a little bit of a faster path. Not entirely sure. We'll just go ahead and go do that. And I have arrived at the Adel's stead. I got backstabbed by Defias there. So let's go ahead and just deal with this Night Runner really quickly. And then let's go ahead and work our way into this farmstead here and see if we can find any information about some sort of missing diplomat and see if there's any involvement with the Defias. So it looks like in the stead there is a barn here as well as a homestead. So let's go ahead and come into here where my marker is telling me to come. And we can go ahead and investigate this house here. This seems like the most likely location. And I can see right there there's a Defy Strong Box that might have a docket inside of it. So let's go ahead and deal with these few devices first. And then I'm taking quite a bit of damage. This is a little scary, but fortunately for me, they're all pretty low level. So let's go ahead and try to deal with this last night blade here. That critical hit is definitely going to help us. A second critical hit and a third frostbolt will go in. And it looks like we are safe. I'm going to go ahead and heal up. I thought I heard another device coming in from behind, but it looks like we are okay. Looks like there's another night plate inside of this farmhouse, and unless there's another device and they're invisible, this is the last one that we'll have to deal with before we can open that chest. And coming in, looks like no one else is in here. Let's go ahead and open this strong box. I got a nice green item from the last device, which is just four agility. We got the device docket, and now let's go ahead and return to Darkshire. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just run along the road. I don't think it's like too much of a difference between going back to Sentinel Hill and taking a griffin or just running back. So I think I'll just go ahead and run back. But while we run back, we can go ahead and read this Defias docket, and it reads, Our first plan has already failed. Fist was successful in switching the guard roster for the tunnel shifts that evening, but due to some unforeseen efforts by some of the citizens of Stormwind, our target was able to flee from the scene before we could capture him. But we planned for such contingencies. Plan 2 has been set in motion and was well underway before our ambush was set off in Stormwind. Plan 2 is just as simple, but will require more patience on our part. Our man on the inside in Minotho has already been paid for his efforts, and he succeeded brilliantly. You should have no problem acquiring our target and capturing him once we set sail. Expect the attack to happen a few miles from the destination. That's where our allies will be laid in waiting. I'm not sure why we've been forced to form an alliance with the creatures, but I can't help but feel we're being coerced ourselves. Ultimately, it won't matter. The target in our custody will be well on our way to taking back Stormwind from those that stole it from us. So it looks like the Defias have kidnapped some sort of important diplomat, and they believe that having kidnapped this diplomat, they will be able to further their cause and being able to reclaim Stormwind as what they see as rightfully theirs because they spent all their time, their money, and their efforts in rebuilding Stormwind and got nothing out of it. 
So they set this motion to capture this important diplomat and they were aided by some sort of creature, so not necessarily humans, but some sort of sentient enemy faction that is helping them out. But they feel like they themselves are being coerced, so maybe there's some sort of bigger, larger threat going on here than just the Defias as well, that are using the Defias in order to further their own goals. For now, let's go ahead and return to Darkshire, and we are almost there already. Back north of Darkshire, let's go ahead and talk to Watcher Bacchus once again, and we can give him this docket. And he says, you're back safe and sound, couldn't ask for much more than that, could you? Now, let's see what we have here. This looks pretty official as far as any device documents I've seen, but it could be a dupe just to throw you off track of whatever it is you're looking for. Whoa, this looks way too complex to be something to just lead you astray. I shouldn't even be looking at this stuff. Take it to Trius, he'll be able to make sense of it, and don't let anyone get in your way. This is bigger than me, and might be even bigger than him, but we'll see. And do me a favor, Athos, don't tell anyone I helped you. If my superiors found out I knew about any of this and didn't share with them, they'd probably hang me. So this is some super important situation that's going on. Currently, we're not entirely sure about what's happening, but it seems like everyone else has some sort of idea. Let's go ahead and return to Stormwind City and we can talk to Ellen Trius. Back at the cheese shop, we can go ahead and run upstairs and we can update Ellen Trius about what we have figured out. And he says, yeah, this is an interesting read. Jorgen and Delaby were smart to bring me in on this. Seems the Defias have been trying pretty hard to complete this plan of theirs. Hmm, what's this? Fist. That's a familiar name. Yeah, now that I think about it, Dash or, Dash or something, what was his name? Fist. Dash or Stone Fist. We call him Fist in some circles, probably on account that he likes to get in bras. You can find him in no Old Town usually, right smack dab in the center of it. Go talk to him. If you have to, use a sword or something heavy and blunt to persuade him to open up some. And don't hesitate. If he's in this as deep as these papers suggest, then he's not going to give you any information willingly. So let's go ahead and find Dasho Stonefist in Old Town, and let's go ahead and question him about what is going on here. And here we are, and here is Dasho Stonefist, and he says, What? You come into me alley and ask questions about me personal business, business which you obviously have nothing to do with? Yeah, you're probably not the smartest mage to come into Stormwind, but you're about to be one of the dumbest to never leave. Have you met me friends? So let's go ahead and deal with this dwarf. And there are a couple of Otan thugs that just ran into here as well. So let's go ahead and clip them up a little bit. Run this way a little bit and I'll start AOEing them down with Blizzard. And let's go ahead and try to deal with all these enemies. I think if we deal with Dash of Stonefist, we'll be able to get uh, our quest completed here. And it looks like those thugs ran off as well, but now they're back. So maybe let's just run away a little bit and uh, looks like the dwarf caught them off, but it looks like they're not going off. So let's go ahead and just run this way a little bit. And I'm gonna just run for my life right now. Dasho Stonefist says, Okay, okay, enough fighting. No one else needs to get hurt. It's okay, boys, back off. You've done enough. I'll meet up with you later. So it looks like they just ran away. And let's go ahead and come in here and talk to this dwarf. And he says, So you came to me for a reason. What is it you need? So, yeah, um, I might know something about that meeting at Adelstead. Happened a few weeks back, I think. I really don't have any part in it. Me part was done when Plan A failed. Damn adventures. The guy we got on the inside for Plan B came out of Minotho. Guy you caught slim. That's all I know regarding their backup plan. Let's go ahead and speak to Ellen Trius and Stormwind. Once again at the cheese shop, let's go ahead and talk to Ellen Trius, and he says, Good to see you're still alive, Athos. So it went well with Dasho then, huh? I've been reading up more on this plan of theirs, and although it doesn't state the name of the diplomat they were after, it does talk about this plan B they enacted after failing on their first attempt to capture him. This slim that Dasho mentioned doesn't seem to have any other name written here, but if you say he's in Minothil, then that's a start. A contact of mine retired in the wet ends of the harbor city of Minothil. He should be willing to help you on your road alone if you tell him you're working for me. His name is Mikhail. He mentioned becoming a bartender before leaving Stormwind a few years ago. Speak to him, find the Slim, and find out if there's anything else to know about this kidnapped diplomat. You need to find out where they've taken him, or at least who he is. Laka doesn't mention anything about their plans after he's captured. So we can pick this quest up, and then we can begin heading to the wetlands. But as far as this quest chain goes, I'm going to go ahead and actually pause here on the quest chain. Because we are it's still yellow, but the next couple of quests after this one is a little bit of a higher level. And I think this is kind of a good stopping point for now. And we'll go ahead and pick up this quest at a later point. But I'm still going to go ahead and head towards the wetlands. But I'm going to go ahead and run north out of the wetlands. And we can begin our journey into Lordaeron. And then we'll figure out the rest of this quest chain and figure out who the missing What's diplomat that? is in a later episode. 
flying into the weapons, I kind of wanted to point out that there is the Iron Forge Airport here, which is not a place that we can actually visit unless we kind of break out of the map. But it's just a really fun area that we can run over, and we can see that there's trolls and gnomes and dwarves and a bunch of other people like that Stormpike guard there. And then as we come down from the mountain and into the weapons, we can see a bunch of farmsteads here up in the mountains, which just like the Iron Forge Airport there. There's nothing really we can do here, we can't really get up here unless we break out of the map, but it's just a nice little area that we can fly over, and it just adds a little bit of extra details into the world as a whole. Arriving in Minotho Harbor, I'm going to go ahead and leave the quest here for the missing diplomat as I said, and we'll come back in a later episode. But now I'm going to go ahead and run east out of Minotho Harbor, and then we can begin running north, and we can go across the Thandal Span, and we can enter Lordaeron. And now we are back at Dunmulder, and we can see off in the distance is the Thandal Span. There used to be two bridges, but the Dark Iron Dwarves blew up one of them, so let's go ahead and cross the one that is still standing. And now, officially, we have spent our entire time in this Let's Play series here in the southern two continents of the Eastern Kingdoms, within Kasimodan, and within the Kingdom of Stormwind. And now that we have finished a lot of the quests here in the Kingdom of Stormwinds, as well as several of the quests here around Kasimodan, we can now begin heading north and to a brand new area of the road where we will be exploring the continent of Lordaeron and all the different human kingdoms that we will find throughout, such as Lordaeron itself, Arathi, Gilneas, Altrak, and so on. But let's go ahead and cross this bridge. We can see it's over a giant expanse of water, and there are actually two quests here that we can go ahead and pick up. We just entered the Arathi Highlands, which is a very fun location, but it's not a huge questing area. And for right now, we're just going to pass through it because we're going to head to Hillsbrad Foothills in order to reach South Shore. But before we reach there, let's go ahead and pick up these two quests, and we can actually come onto the other bridge here that is destroyed because we have a quest giver over here that we can jump over to. If we come to the edge over here, we can jump onto here, and then if we see right there, we can try our best to jump across. And I missed. Okay. This is very awkward. I guess while we are down here, let's go ahead and swim down here a little bit. We can find this waterlogged letter that this dead dwarf here has. Go ahead and pick it up, and it is the start of a quest. So it reads, the waterlogged and war-torn envelope dissolves in your hands leaving you with a few pages of a letter in your grasp, written with painstaking care. This letter is addressed to Mrs. Sarah Ballou of Ironforge and begins, My dear Sarah. Deliver solely Ballou's letter to Sarah Ballou. So it looks like there is a fallen dwarf there that has died, and in his final moments he wrote a letter to his wife. And it reads, Done Motor of the Wetlands, My dear Sarah, the indicators are very strong that we shall move to take watch over the Thandospan in a few days. Lest I shall not be able to write to you again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I shall be no more. Our assignment may be one of a few days' duration and full of pleasure, and it may be one of severe conflict and death to me. If it is necessary that I should fall on the battlefield for the Alliance, I am ready. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how strongly the Kingdom of Ironforge leans on the triumph of the Alliance, and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and suffering of the Great Wars. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this Alliance and to pay that debt. I'm going to go ahead and run past all these Dark Iron Dwarves here, and I'm going to go ahead and get back towards the Thandal Span. The letter continues, Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me and my nightly cables that nothing but omnipotence could break in. And my love of kingdom comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly on with all these chains to the battlefield. The memories of all the blissful moments I've spent with you come creeping over me, and I feel most deeply grateful to the light and you that I have enjoyed them so long, and how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years when we might so have lived and loved together and seen our sons grow up to honorable dwarfhood around us. I know I have but few and small claims upon divine providence, but something whispers to me, perhaps it is that wafted prayer of my little Edgar, that I shall return to my loved ones unharmed. If I do, not my dear Sarah, never forget how much I love you, and when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, I shall whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you, how thoughtless, how foolish I have oftentimes been. How gladly I would wash out with my tears every little spot upon your happiness and struggle with all the misfortunes of this world to shield you and my dear children from harm, but I cannot. 
I must watch you from the twisting nether and hover near you while you buffet the storms with your precious little freight and wait with sad patience till we meet to part no more. But O oh Sarah, if the dead can come back to Azeroth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be near you in the gladdest day and in the darkest night, amidst your happiest scenes and gloomiest hours always. Think I am gone and wait for thee, for we shall meet again, solely. So a very heartfelt and emotional letter there, and we can go ahead and deliver this to Sarah, and we can inform her about this horrible news. But now, let's go ahead, and I'm going to do my best to jump again here. I'm going to go ahead and get a running start, and I failed again. Okay, uh, let's go back up. I feel like I never missed that jump. I'm not sure what's happening. I think my problem that time was because I blinked, so let's make sure to not do that again. This area here at the entrance of Arathi Highlands is so beautiful. I love these like high cliffs with the waterfalls and we have the Thando Span here. And then of course those Dark Iron Dwarves which are less beautiful of a sight to see. And we can see the weapons which we were just at but is now off in the distance. And now I'm going to go ahead and try this again. I'm kind of trying to remember how exactly I got over it. I think it was right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do what some might call insane and just try this again. Oh my gosh. Okay. Back here again, let's go ahead and try this again. I'm going to try from this angle, and nope, okay. Well, what number are we on? I'll go back for my fifth attempt. So I was just reading about this jump, and it looks like some people say it is impossible to do it without any speed buffs, but I'm going to go ahead and do my best to prove them wrong. So fifth time here, let's go ahead and do this one more time, and we'll go back and do it another time. Okay, okay. I can do this. I think this jump is particularly difficult because I think it kind of drops down a little bit so you kind of like fall a little bit before you're able to jump so it makes it like a little more difficult. But let's go ahead and try to jump at the perfect time and I almost made it. Maybe it's not possible. Maybe, maybe I need to go back and get some help here. Okay, I feel like this might be the definition of insanity. I'm going to expect a different result. I'll do it this time. Let's go ahead and go, 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 go. And okay, th there might actually not be a way for me to get that. So let's come up with a new plan, I guess. I feel like that was the single best jump I could have done. I'm not entirely sure. So I've been thinking, and I think we have three strategies that we could do here. So one strategy is we can go get some sort of potion that will grant us swiftness like a potion of swiftness for example and we can use that in order to gain some movement speed and then we could cross the gap there and make the jump that would require us to go back to city and to go to an auction house because we are not an alchemist and to get that potion my second idea is that we could use slow fall because we could get a light feather and then use that to make the gap because we'd be able to cover the distance before we fall too much but that would require us to get a light feather and I think they really only spawn from like lower level enemies and I should probably pick some of these up so we have them just in case because it would be nice to have them in this situation but for now I'm going to go ahead and go with a third option which I am going to go ahead and call dying so I'm going to go ahead and pull some of these dark iron dwarves here and I'm going to go ahead and use fire blast against the supplier and I'm going to go ahead and try to stay in combat with this guy and I'm going to go ahead and drag him all the way towards the thandal span. Let's go ahead and run this way a little bit more. We have a shadow caster on us as well which I don't particularly want right now. Let's go ahead and cast a fire blast on the supplier again and then let's continue dragging him this way. I'm going to go ahead and frost nova come this way a little bit go ahead and cast that again it looks like the shadow caster is still following us which at this point might actually be a good thing but let's go ahead and sit right here and i'm going to come as far to the edge as i can and then i am going to forfeit my life right now and i'm going to let these two dark iron dwarves kill me and i'm going to hope i am close enough to the edge that i am able to respawn once i'm on the other side let's go ahead and run back now 
So my plan here is when we are dead and we are in our spirit form, our ghost form, we actually have increased movement speed. We are running faster across the land, faster than normal, which is a little bit of swiftness that might be able to give us enough swiftness to get across the gap. And I died on the very edge here so that I could resurrect while I'm on the other side. So let's go ahead and try this jump again. Let's line it up here and let's jump. And I made it across and it looks like I can resurrect. <laughs> I made it and I am now on the other side. Let's go ahead and come into here and then we can finally pick up this quest. So Foggy here says, had quite a bit of the old moonshine last night. Long braid would have had my head if he knew I passed out during my watch. The noggin hurts something fierce. Felt as though a whole brigade of siege engines passed overhead. All that rumbling. Oh my, look at the time. I promised Brewmaster Bilger in South Shore that I'd repay my debt to him by sending some moonshine. But there are just 15 minutes left before I'm overdue. Take him this batch, would you please, and hurry. So let's go ahead and pick up this batch. And we now have 15 minutes to do this quest. So let's quickly jump down into the water here. And we can see it is ticking down on our quest log here 14 minutes and 48 seconds remaining and we have to get to south shore which is in a completely different zone on the whole other end of arathi highlands so for the end of this episode here we're going to go ahead and quickly run towards south shore i'm going to use blink whenever i can and i'm going to more or less make a beeline for south shore and we can go ahead and talk a little bit about the areas that we are running through as we get there so running back up this hill, we have this Dark Iron Camp, which has been a threat to us in the past, but is now even more of a threat because they are blocking our way towards South Shore. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best to run past them quickly here. I'll go ahead and just root them in place and then blink across. And then uh, that is hurry. We have already spent a minute and 15 plus seconds getting across here. So let's go ahead and try to make up some time. Now that we are done with the Thandal Span, we can start running into the Arathi Highlands proper. And as I mentioned earlier, we are just going to be running through here and we're not going to be spending too much time here just yet. We will return to the zone and we will start doing quests here, but just not quite yet. I'm wanting to head to South Shore, which is very convenient because this is what this quest is taking us to. We have to go to South Shore to turn in this quest, so we'll go ahead and just double up with our destination here and turn in this quest as we get there. There is one flight path and one main encampment for the Alliance in this zone that I'm going to quickly dip into really quickly so we can unlock the flight path so we can fly there if we would like. But other than that, I'm just going to run straight past here. But when we return to the Rathi Highlands, I will talk more about this area and all the lore and story going on here and we'll explore the quests. But for now, I'll just talk a little bit about how Arathi Highlands is kind of the home of humanity as we know it. Where the first ever human kingdom, Strom, was founded in these lands and the ruins of that kingdom is a place that we can actually explore. We can go ahead and run into here into refugee point and we can go ahead and get this flight path really quickly. We have spent three and a half minutes so far. I think we're fine on time. I think we can take this little bit of a detour. We can see there are a ton of quests in here but I'm going to go ahead and ignore all those for now and I'm just going to go ahead and get this flight path. Here's the Griffin Master, talk to him really quickly, new fly path discovered, let's go ahead and run straight back out of here. But the human kingdom of Strom was formed when the great human warlord Thoradin united a bunch of human tribes in this area to fight against the trolls that also occupy this area. And we can see the fallen capital of Strom, this is what is known as Stromgard nowadays. We can see it there and we will explore that area soon enough. But as Strom fell, humanity spread out from this area of the road and began to occupy a bunch of different areas within the Eastern Kingdoms and eventually formed the different nations that we see now today. So several groups of humans went north and they found Lordaeron, Gilneas, and so on. And then one group of humans went south to Stormwind and founded the Kingdom of Stormwind. And then all the various events throughout history occurred and we are now here looking upon the old ruins of the first human kingdom and we will return soon enough and explore more of that lore. But looking beyond Stromgard, we can see there is a giant wall here, and this is a barrier between the Rathi Highlands and Hillsbrad Foothills, which is where we need to go. So we're going to pass straight through here. Looking at our time, we have 8 minutes and 37 seconds, so I think we're doing fine. We just have to make sure we don't make any other pit stops or die at any point along the way. We can see this great wall that has a giant porculus in there is really worn down and 
partially destroyed as you can see over there there's a giant hole in the wall and this area of the world is called Thoradin's Wall so Thoradin the great human warlord that united the tribes of humanity and formed the first kingdom this is a wall that he had built to help defend his empire which is a little bit of ancient history now but is still a very prominent feature of this area but now we are in Hillsborough Foothills and you can see here that there's a level 24 giant moss creeper and Hillsborough Foothills is a really interesting location because this is the first time that we are exploring an area other than the Arathi Highlands which is, this is also true for but we haven't done any quests in there yet but this area is where Horde and Alliance can both level at so we have only explored areas that have only been areas for the Alliance to level up in but now we might be passing by Horde and because we are not on a PvP server that's not going to be too big of an issue for us. There are just some other players out in the world that are doing quests as well. They're just not members of our faction. But Hillsborough Foothills is a really interesting location because while most leveling zones have the Horde and Alliance leveling at the same level, Hillsborough Foothills have the Horde and Alliance leveling at different levels where for the most part Alliance that are in Hillsborough Foothills are leveling from like level 30 to like level 35-ish, whereas the Horde are leveling from level 20 to level 30. We have a giant group of Forsaken right there, which are undead members of the Horde, but these are just NPCs, and I'm going to go ahead and run around the left side of them, because I do not want to deal with them, because I want to complete this quest. But they are heading towards a Horde camp here in Hillsborough Foothills, which is a very fun location called Terran Mill and it is kind of the polar opposite of South Shore. So while Terran Mill is like the Horde home here in this map, the Alliance home is South Shore. And for anyone who played on PvP servers way back in the day, Hillsborough Foothills was a very contested location where the Alliance and Horde players fought each other often because of how close these two places were to each other as well as how many players came through here questing and whatnot. But we can go ahead and take the road south here from the main road that we were on and we can head into the town of South Shore which is a very important location especially from Warcraft 2 as is many of the areas around here that we will be exploring in the coming episodes. But now we can see coming into our view here is the town of South Shore. So I guess while we are running through we can go ahead and talk to this flight master here and we can go ahead and get this flight path unlocked. We just explored South Shore and we have it uncovered on our map now. Let's go ahead and get this and then let's go ahead and run towards the end and we can turn in this quest. We see there are a ton of quests around us right now and this is a major questing hub for us in the coming episodes but I'm going to go ahead and save that for later. Let's go ahead and run back here and I think we need to come down here and yes the brewmaster is in here. Let's go ahead and deliver this moonshine and get our 55 silver and we also got a ton of experience from that as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and just talk to to the innkeeper in here, innkeeper Hello. Anderson, and I'm actually going to make this place my home, and I'm going to go ahead and call it good here for this episode. Hope you all enjoyed watching through this episode, and next episode we will begin our quests here in South Shore. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember, drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.